Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to carry out a proportion test in Stata. In order to do so, we're going to just create some of our own observations and just conduct a you know, test from scratch here. So let me show you what I'm going to do. The first thing is I'm just going to set up 120 uh, open observations. So I'm going to create those into which we're going to populate some data to do the proportion test. And what I'd like to do to start with is I want to create a variable for gender. And let's say that what I'm interested in doing is I'm at a university and I want to test whether the proportion of male to female students is identical. And it could be that, that this, uh, this question is motivated by different concerns. It could be that you know, there's a claim that there are more female students, for example, at a university, or more male students, or, uh, you know, that, that kind of thing, or even within uh, certain classes or departments or what have you. So in order to test something like that, let's come up with some mocked up data. And so here's what I'm going to do in my code. I'm going to create the variable of gender, and I'm going to go ahead and label it zero for males and one for females, and I'm going to set it up so that the first 60 values are 0 for male and the second 60 are 1 for female. I'm going to go ahead and label it gender so it looks better on the graph. So let's go ahead and do that. And so let's verify that we have set up these data. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to label the value. So let's go ahead and enter the following code. here. So label value gen gender and I defined gender over here earlier. I just had to had to create the value. So now we can go in and we can see that the data are nicely labeled for us. Now I want to create a variable for classes. So let's say that I've done a couple of things. I've gone ahead and I've sampled 120 students and based on that I want to test the proportion of men for the entire sample but maybe I'm also interested in the classes so let's create let's create some random data for classes and I'm just highlighting the code here um, I'm not going to talk you through every aspect of this code but you're going to see how it works it's it's uh, this 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 appeared on the Stata blog and it's just a way to generate uh, integers in a domain that you define and I'm interested in five classes so I've gone ahead and set up this code which you know you can copy and if uh, if you're using you know mocked up data you could change that to 10 or something let's let's see what that looks like so here we see that we've created some random values here for class ranging from 1 through 5 and there's no need to label those now the next thing i want to do is if, if you go back and look in at the gender you'll see that there's 60 men followed by 60 females and what I want to do here is just kind of randomize this order a little bit so it doesn't look quite that way. Now again, this is just a mocked up data set to demonstrate the uh, test of proportions. So there's really no purpose to this code other than to just kind of shuffle the values of men and women in the data. So I've gone ahead and generated a new, new variable y. And I've used the r uniform function in Stata just so that that's a random uh, variable from 0 to 1 being the domain. Uh, I've gone ahead and sorted y and then I'm going to drop y but first let me show you what happens when we actually enter this code here. So you can see we have random values of y and they range from uh, 0 0.001 to 0 0.994 and if you kind of look at the male and female here because we sorted on this randomly created variable we've now shuffled men and women over here. So this this approximates the reason I did that is it's more real world. We we approximated a more normal kind of random draw of men and women uh not just in the order that let's say we sampled them but also in the order of classes uh, that they might be in. So now Y's, uh, Y has done its job so we can go ahead and drop it and go back to the data. Now we see we have a shuffled properly shuffled data set here with gender and class. Now we can go on and actually do our test. So here's the command. It's PR test, and then it's the variable that you're testing, which is gen for gender, and the two equal signs put together. 
and then the proportion. And here I'm just putting 0.5 because I'm assuming that you know we we believe that the proportions are equal. Uh, we could always change that, and later I'm going to show you some code where you know for theoretical reasons or maybe on the basis of some previous empirical work. We assume that the proportion might be 0.45. You know, we can do that. We can test really any proportion that we want. I'm just going to leave it at 0.5 for now. And in terms of the uh, the significance level, the default here in stat is 0.05. I'll show you how to tweak that later too. But first, let's go ahead and do that. So we have a couple of things here. Uh, we have our we have our mean, and that's 0.5. And we know that's 0.5 because when we created the data we created 60 males and 60 females exactly. Uh, so that's no surprise, but obviously in real world data, this is probably won't be exactly 0.5. And we see the confidence interval here. Uh, we get the Z value and we get the different P values uh, over here, uh, which lead us to conclude that there is no statistically significant uh, uh, difference between the mean and 0.5, not surprisingly because they're identical. Uh, now if we went in there and let's say if we change some values, you know, you could see that it wouldn't be exactly that same way. So let's change some males to females, for example, just to change up the uh, the distribution and go back and run this command again and you're going to see some subtle differences. You know, here, obviously not huge differences. We still don't have any significant findings, but this is more of a real-world mean. That's not exactly 0.5. And so there's a couple of things here you need to check out in the uh, test of proportions. There's three p-values here, and in one of them, the one in the middle, what you're testing is the hypothesis that the proportion, your obtained proportion, is different from your hypothesized proportion. Then here, you're testing whether it's less than your hypothesized proportion, and here you're testing whether it's more than your hypothesized proportion. So those are different p-values, and you know that's going to depend on how you set up the hypotheses in the beginning. Uh, you know the, the the tails basically, and what what you're testing for. You might have had reason to test uh, that the proportion of men is greater than the proportion uh, of uh, 0.5. In other words, that there are more uh, men proportionally than women. And if, if that was the way you set up your hypothesis, you would look at this p-value over here uh, in the right column. But, you know, here, the way I talked about this problem, we just want to see if the proportion is different from 0.5. And here we see that it is not, because the p-value is over 0.05. Now, there's a couple of other things that I want to show you, um, you know, and this is using stat as really, you know, rich capabilities here to do some other... Uh, you know, add some other commands to this. We're going to use this command here by class comma sort colon. We're going to put this here as a prefix and class we already defined it. You remember there's five classes that we created randomly. So here this would be whatever variable you know you want to put in that you're interested in sorting by. And I've done a couple of things here. I'm actually putting in two commands at once. I'm putting in this command here and then I'm repeating it but I'm changing the level of significance. I'm changing my alpha here. So that just shows you that you know you have control over that in stata and you know let's go ahead and run that and then scroll through it. So notice what stata did for us here. We we have generated uh, the test of proportion for every class now separately. And if you remember we had five classes and scrolling down here looks like uh, you know nothing is significant. Uh, not really surprisingly um, there's a couple of other things here that we can do. I want to show you just right quick that we can change the proportion that we're interested in. Now, initially I had said 0.5, but like I said, let's say that you have some reason to believe it's, it's more specific. It's, it's maybe, you know, uh, 45%. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's what you want to test. So you can just go ahead and change this number over here. And I've gone ahead, and in this last one, I've also shown you different alpha. Um, so, you know, this is all new material that kind of gives you control over the proportion that you're testing for. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the same kind of readout, but it's just adjusted for a, a different proportion. Um, so, again, you know, your choice of proportion is kind of driven by 
theory and maybe past empirical findings, but the good news is in Stata you can just you know enter any proportion that you want. What I'd like to do here finally is put in some different confidence interval plots, which I think are a really good idea when you've done a test of proportions to kind of follow up with these. And I'm leaving this code up here just so you can look at it. I'm starting out with just a, a confidence interval plot for all the students, and then I'm going by class over here. And then what I've done over here is I've just added uh, the S1 mono color scheme, which is my favorite color scheme in Stata. I don't know why. And um, what I've done is I've also gone ahead and named the, uh, the second, third, and fourth uh, confidence interval plots. And the reason I've done that is this. If the name command wasn't here at the end, Stata would just kind of replace one of these with the next. So I wouldn't get four graphs at the same time. This one would get made, and, you know, generated, and then replaced by this one, and replaced by this one, and replaced by that one. So what happens is when we give different names to different graphics, they're all kind of generated at the same time. And if you see your screen, you'll see them pop up sort of one at a time. So this this is the S1, uh, the S1 mono uh, version of the the graphic here, and we see the confidence interval plots for gender. Not surprisingly, you know, they all intersect. And we see the same thing here for the entire uh, data set. And again, this is S1 mono. And the reason I prefer this, by the way, it's not really aesthetics. It's because I, I, I end up doing a lot of work in APA format. And this is, uh, this is the reason I like to use that. For aesthetic reasons, I like S1 color a lot. So you can kind of play around with that, by the way and just generate these graphics in any scheme that you want. And here, this is the Stata default graphic, and this one as well. And so whenever you're doing a test of proportions, I think it's a great idea to cap it off with a confidence interval plot like this. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you, and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com, we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore, we work very closely with you in order to perfect your Chapter 3 and Chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day, you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter four uh, following a perfect chapter three and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day.